And hello and welcome to the Cube Talk Show. My name is Joe Barbieri. I'm your host. Uh, this is a show about money and, uh, as we say, the ever-changing face of money. And today our topic is how to make money and limit risk with options. Our guest is Thomas Lemaguerre, and he's the executive director of Vequitas Capital Corporation. Uh, so, Tom, how are you? I'm doing well, Joe. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. So, uh, so options, I guess to start off, uh, tell us a bit about your background and uh, what, what you've done in the industry. Okay. So, first, I was I actually started as an analyst for Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, uh, spent some time there, built an affinity for numbers, then uh, went on to the retail side of things with McKenzie Financial and MRS Trust, uh, moved then into sales um, at One Financial as Associate Vice President there and later inside Sales Manager and Vice President. And, uh, and that's where I started getting some ideas in terms of product structuring and otherwise. Um, on my end of things, always uh, was building my trading strategies and, uh, and otherwise. And, um, and that led me into markets that would allow you to easily long and short with mm -hmm. strict risk management. So that's how I got into the Forex space as well as the futures space or the commodity space. And uh, following that, I founded Vequitas Capital Corporation, uh, registered with, uh, with the NFA and CFTC as a guaranteed introducing brokerage firm. Okay. Yeah, you were on the show about a year ago. Just uh, It's already if, been a year. If anyone's wondering that I've seen you before, you, you have been on the show before. That's true. So uh, getting to the options, I guess we could start with the good stuff. How do you make money with options? Well, there's, there's different ways, Joe. I mean, um, it's a very versatile instrument uh, that, that allows you to uh, play it a few different ways. One way, you can make capital gains off options. And just to, as a, a bit of, um, of a summary on what an option is, it's the right, the textbook thing is the right but not the obligation to take possession of a position at a specified price. All that means, if we were to put it down in layman's terms, let's just say this glass is worth two dollars now, but you believe it could be worth three dollars. Mm -hmm. You could say, well, I'm going to buy an option um, so that in three months time, there's a time element to options, in three months time, if ever this glass of water is worth three dollars, then I'll have the opportunity to buy it from you, take it from you. Um, the, where that gets interesting is if ever this glass of water then becomes $4, you could technically take possession of it at $3 and you've just made a buck. So yeah. that's going long the option. It's the right but not the obligation to take possession of a commodity like this glass of water um, at a specified price. But you don't have to take it. So that's buying the option. You don't have to take it. Your obligation is limited to the amount of money that you pay, and that's called the premium. Mm. So you buy that right to be able to take possession of that. On the other side of that, so if you're buying the right, there's somebody who's selling it. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody sometimes who owns the water already and says, well, I really don't believe that water will go to $3. So I'm going to sell this option to Joe at $3. And if ever the, the price never hits that $3, then I get to keep all your money. Yeah. Right? So that's the seller of the option. So there's these two aspects, and they offer different strategies on both end of things. So the, I could say the simplest one to understand is buying the option. And it's that first example there of, of the glass of water being $2, um, you know, and, and you, you say, okay, well, I'm, I'm buying this option at $3. So you pay that little bit of premium. If ever water were to go at $3 or above, you would make money. Hmm. And um, so that's one way of making it, and that would be a capital gain. 
another way of playing options is on the other side of things, which is an income strategy, which is selling the option. Because mm. for that sale, you collect an amount of premium, that they call it, which is uh, an amount of income that you can receive. So if you do this every month, you could receive premium every month. Yeah. So these are, these are two ways. Now, obviously, th this is very simple when you look at one or the other. Uh, but then it comes down to how do you combine these to be able to um, provide the desired outcome that you're looking for. And we get into option strategies. Uh, but also what's really interesting about option is its, its ability to manage your risk. So for people out there who own stocks, who own commodities, currencies, whatever it might be, you can hedge that risk with options or you can make additional income using options. So the, these are so some of the, the different options. So the options are on almost everything. Correct. It's not limited to any, any type of market. You can have it on stock, on, on commodities, on currencies. Absolutely. I think there's even weather options somewhere. There are weather options, absolutely. Which, which sounds funny, <laughs> but, I, but I know they exist. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Well, you know, things have really come a long way. Um, I guess the, um, the place where you can access the most options would be on the futures market. Um, mm. Maybe not the most, but the greatest diversity uh, mm. for the simple reason that the futures market are, are extremely uh, diverse. You've got, you've got metals, you've got energy, you've still got equity indexes, fixed income, currencies, weather. Um, I mean, there's, there's many different avenues. Obviously, this can also be done on, um, on individual equities. And in this case, instead of the underlying being a commodity, it's going to be 100 shares. Yeah. So whatever is being spoken about here can be applied to, to many different um, styles of investments or different industries that people may like. Uh, but the strategies themselves don't change. It's just the underlying. Hmm. So just uh, some more background. So you have this person that is making a bet that the glass of water will go to a certain price, and you have somebody who's on the other side saying, I don't think it's gonna to go to that price. Correct. They make an agreement saying, I'll sell you this, I'll wager you that it's not gonna happen, and if it doesn't happen, I get to win the wager. Correct. And if it does happen, the buyer wins the wager. Is there ever an issue of somebody not paying for the wager? Well, I mean, all of these contracts are done in the, in the intermediary of the exchanges, right? Mm -hmm. So there's always a counterparty on the other side of this trade. So if somebody is not good on their side, there's somebody else out there that, uh, that will be. And that's the advantage of having standardized contracts, mm -hmm. is that there's always going to be a ready and willing buyer on, or seller on the other end of, of your deal, right? Um, so that's, that's not so much for, for the investor to worry about. That's more the mechanisms of the market. Mm. And uh, so far, so good. No guarantees about the future, but, yeah. um, but so far it's held, it's held firm and, and, um, and, and there's many barriers that are in place to protect the investor in situations like that. But there's a very intricate uh, clearing system that exists within the futures market uh, that, uh, that, that protects the investors in such situations. So now, um, so the capital gain is basically saying to make money if I'm going to go long on it or if I'm betting that it's something is going to go up and the seller is betting that something will go down or stay the same. Um, so in terms of combining them, there's lots of ways to combine them, but I guess starting with the simplest one, what, what, do, you, what do you see as a common strategy of combining? Well, I think it's, it's important to see not, not what I think is great, but what might be practical uh, for the majority of people out there. One of the angles that we can go at this from, first of all, anything, if you want to make money on the way up, then you would buy a call option. A call profits when prices go up. Mm -hmm. If you want to make money by buying options, with the prices going down, then you would buy a put. A put profits when prices drop. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets confusing. 
if you are selling the options, it's the reverse. So if you're selling a call, you want prices to go down. Because if they go up and hit your, your price, it's called the strike price, where water hits three bucks, I guess, water in this situation, yeah. then at that point in time, you are forced to deliver um, a long position. And that would most typically cause a, a significant loss for you. So, and so when you're buying and selling options, it's opposite. But the fundamental base of it is when you buy a call, you want prices to go up. You will profit when prices increase when you buy a call. You will profit if prices decrease if you buy a put. Okay. Um, I guess for the majority of how, based on your viewership, what, what type of investments do they typically hold? Do you, do you have any idea? Uh, not exactly. I, I, I would say a lot of people have not done options before. Probably uh, looking at the general population, probably 5-10% of people do use them. Fair. So then I... So I would say that's probably similar. Okay. I would assume therefore then they're, they're most likely invested in index funds, um, probably a bunch of equities, and maybe some of them have diversified away and have started playing in commodities. So let's just assume that as a base um, and common strategies that we can use. So one, one, it's very, very simple, but one, one way to get your feet wet, so to speak, with options is by doing something called covered strategies. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite, one of the ones that I started with is something called the covered call. And in essence, it means you own the underlying and you're gonna sell a call on top of it. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say you own, you own this glass of water. And so what you'll do is it's at $3 right now. And you think that there's a low probability that this glass of water is going to go up to $5. So you would then, you not only own this glass of water, you own it. You're going to sell a call with this at the underlying. So when you're looking at equities, um, an equity options for 100 shares. If you're looking at gold options, it's for 100 ounces, right? So um, when we're looking at this particular situation, while I own the underlying, I'm gonna sell an option and I'm gonna collect that premium. Let's say it's at um, $5. So if ever the price of this glass of water were to go up to $5, I'm protected. I just give this glass of water to the other guy at $5 and I've just made a capital gain between three and five dollars. I get to keep that. So since, let's say, we'll say this is shares. So there's a there's hundred of these. So it's gonna be 100 times $2 gain, $200 um, that you would have made on the underlying shares, plus whatever you collected in terms of premium when you sold it. If ever it didn't hit that price, you just kept that extra money and you've just made extra yield. So these are really good strategies, especially when markets are flat, they're not going anywhere, or markets are slowly going up, or markets are tanking. Mm -hmm. these, are, these, are, these are really good in, in those types of situations. So I think this may be pertinent, um, especially in these times, because it's so difficult to know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people still um, are on a standpoint of buy and hold, and one way to continue profiting, even though the markets may not be going in your direction, is by doing a covered call strategy. It's, um, you know, it's a defined risk. You already own the underlying. You're collecting income on a monthly basis. If ever the markets were to go up and you have to deliver your shares, then fine. You've already determined what that, um, that profit level is that you would be comfortable with. And if it doesn't hit there, you keep on collecting. So let's say your, your stock typically would have, would have yielded you know, 10%. You can reasonably expect to, to collect 5 6% uh, by doing such a covered call strategy. So that's one way of, um, of playing that. Um, I guess another way that would be interesting to people who own stock or who own commodities and otherwise would be to uh, buy a put. Mm. So if you own gold, you're afraid if gold goes down. That's when you lose. 
So if you buy a put, like we were saying, if prices start decreasing, that put will increase in value. Mm -hmm. And as such, that hedges your risk. So these are two simple um, married strategies, we can call them, because they're actually married to the long position, something that mm -hmm. already exists. This is just one way of either increasing your yield by doing the covered call strategy or hedging out your risk uh, by buying a put in the event that uh, that markets drop. Hmm. Now, all of this is uh, all of this is on a time basis. The options last so long, so whatever's happening has to occur within a certain amount of time. That, that, that that's the case, right? Absolutely. And then when the time runs out, you start another one. You roll over to a new one. Correct. And that way you can keep it. You can keep it going. Um, I mean, in that situation, without getting into it too, too much, I mean, if, if you're going to go ahead and buy the option, it's, it's most likely better to go further out. Uh, the reason for that is that the, the time factor that's involved in options, there's an exponential decay that occurs within the last month. Hmm. So when you're selling the option, you want to sell it within the last month because you will collect the highest amount of premium and that will, the time value will decay the value of that option very quickly. And that's what you want. You don't want the person you sold the option to to be successful. You want them to fail miserably so that you can keep this money, right? And, um, and you know, I'm not sure what the exact stat is, but it's, it's over, I believe, 80%. Definitely over 80% of options expire worthless. Um, so it's the sellers most of the time that make the money, not the buyers of the option. Yeah. Um, so in any case, yes, there is this time component, but if you're going to buy the option, buy it further out so that the time value won't decay as quickly. Um, if you're selling options, sell within the month so that the time, uh, the time value decay is going to work to your advantage. Yeah. So um, are, there any, are there any other factors that come into how to know what option to buy? or um, when to buy it. Well, time is one of them that's pretty big. What the underlying is doing would be another. Is there anything else that... Well, I guess one, one way to look at things may be in terms of when to purchase an option. Mm -hmm. um, let's say we're looking at a call, which means you're expecting the prices to go up. If you buy a call after the, the market has moved up, it's going to be more expensive mm. because there's this expectation that it's, it's going to keep on going up, whether it be correct or not. Um, so if anything, if you want to buy a call, you'd want to do it after a drop mm. and even better, a violent drop because mm. um, there's also a volatility factor, mm. right? So if there's high volatility, the, the, the value of the option is going to increase as well. So there's many different factors that go into the pricing of an option. But to keep things simple for, for the viewers, um, I would say, you know, if you're looking to go long, which is you, you want to participate in a market that you believe is going to go up and you want to make money as that goes up, wait until there's a heavy price drop and buy the option, buy the call option. If you believe that something's going to go down, you're feeling maybe a little bit bearish about these, uh, these equity markets and that it makes no sense that they'd be so high, then wait until a new high is made and then go ahead and, and, and buy a put, mm. right? But you want to work it in, in inverse. You want to mm. work so-called uh, position things when it's not obvious to do so in the market. So if everybody's very, very happy and looking to push things up, well, that's the time to to go short. So it's a bit of a contrarian point of view, but it, it works in terms of getting those options cheaper. And at the end of the day, you get your chop options cheaper, uh, that just means more room for your capital gain, right? It limits your risk, especially if you're buying. That means you, instead of putting up, let's say, $300 at $3 per share that you would have bought for the option, maybe you get it for... 220. Well, mm. that, that's a significant savings. You know, even if it was just 30 bucks, that's still 10% 10, 10 savings. Mm. So that's, that's a quick little trick that, um, that, uh, that, that, that your viewers out there can use to, to get into their options. 
and um, and have more options. <laughs> no pun intended. Options on the options. Absolutely, yeah. options on the options. We won't get into those today. Yeah. I, w I was I was told somewhere that uh, the most successful trades are the ones that make you ill. <laughs> what do you mean? Or the ones where you we have the least amount of comfort, because we'll say the contrarian view. When the market is absolutely crashing, and there's fear, rampant fear, that's when the big buyers will go in and buy. Absolutely. When it feels really bad to to buy, and when things are really at super highs, and it's going to go up forever, that's when these people sell. And uh, that's usually when the time to sell is. It's scary. I and mean, it's scary to be able to make money. Because at the end of the day, the people who make the money are the ones who see the opportunity, have the courage to seize it, and have the capital to work behind it. Hmm. And uh, that implies a few different angles when it comes to, to money. Number one is, is saving, hmm. right? Saving so that when times are bad, you have cash. Because that, that's, that's, how, that's how people make money. That's how you know, a lot of opportunities come, is when many people out there are distressed, they're hurting, they have assets, they're fire selling those assets in order to, to make ends meet, in order to make mortgage payments and otherwise. And that's when you need to be there with your cash to alleviate their pain, but at the same time generate a huge opportunity for yourself. Hmm. Um, so that you know, it's it's very important to have that type of liquidity. But you know, even with the options, you know, there, there's a, there's a way of doing things so that you don't necessarily have to take that leap of faith and lose everything, mm. right? J just think about the the simple strategy here that um, that we just spoke spoke about. Let's say the markets have been tanking; it's down fifty percent. We find ourselves in in March of two thousand and nine. And you say, well, you know, I really think that now's the time to maybe buy. Hmm. If you're not entirely sure, but your rationale says, listen, you know, things are so oversold that, that maybe it's time to go. Well, maybe that just means that you go ahead and you buy the stock, the commodity, whatever it might be at that price. And you also buy a put. Hmm. So that if you're wrong, that put can profit. Mind you, there is a cost to this insurance. You still have to pay for this protection, but you have that option. Hmm. Now, the next logical thing that comes into that, which is where my mind went, is, well, if there's this cost, what can we do to limit that cost or eliminate it? Hmm. So we take it one step further, and this is called the caller, where you buy the put, you buy, you buy the shares, you buy the put, and simultaneously you sell a call. And you take the premium from this call and you use it to pay off some of the put. Sometimes you can pay off the whole put, depending on how strategic you are with the entry of it. Um, so there's a quick little hint right there. Mm. You know, this is actually a strategy that, that Vequitas has developed mm. um, with our portfolio management team. And, um, and we take things a few steps forward where, in effect, by using such a strategy, we're trying. Our goal is to be able to do that, pay for the full price of the insurance, and continue not only collecting income, but irrespective of what happens to the underlying, have the ability to generate a capital gain. So. That may seem, well, that's a complete mystery, but I'm not going to get into it here. We would need a nice whiteboard, and, but it's, it's very, nice very simple. chart. Absolutely. Yeah. It involves yeah. three positions, and we, we really believe in simplicity. You know, there's just so much. Um, there's so many complex things that are being presented to clients these days. They have no idea what's happening. So they, they found it quite refreshing to say, well, listen, we buy this underlying, we protect it in this way, and this is how we pay for the insurance. And by X date, based on our experience, this is what, what you're going to experience in terms of, um, in terms of uh, um, risk mitigation and, and also in terms of returns. 
-hmm. So if anybody's interested, by all means, contact, and then it'd be a pleasure either myself or the portfolio manager to go through things and, mm -hmm. and explain things in a little bit more detail and also show you some, uh, some real life examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we're going to take a short break for about five minutes and uh, we'll continue on with that caller strategy. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Joe. Hello and welcome back to the Cube Talk Show and we're here with Thomas Lemaguerre. We're in the middle of doing caller strategy for options. The topic is making money and mitigating risk with options. So just as a recap, if a market's gone down and you want to buy something, you can buy this put option to cover you if it, the thing goes down further, but you also can sell a call option to make money while you're doing it. That's right. And offset the cost. But there's also a long actual underlying position. So okay. let's say in this case, we, we've got GE. So at that point in time, you know, GE $6 or whatever it might be, you buy GE, uh, you would simultaneously buy a put at the money, they call it, so at $6 or whatever. The further away you go from it, the less expensive it'll be. So that's something you have to play around with. Um, but you would buy the put so that, let's just say it's at the money, so $6, so that if ever GE were to go down to five, that put is now in the money $1 or in profit by $1, you know, on, on that initial cost, whatever it might be. Um, and then simultaneously, let's say that, that, uh, that put option is going to cost you, you know, I don't know, $250 for whatever reason. So then, you know, at that point in time, what you would do is sell a call. So if GE is at $6, maybe you sell a call at $8, $9. Collect that premium and you use that to pay off some of the $250. Maybe you collect $100. And now for the protection, your insurance, instead of costing $250, might cost $150, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, obviously these numbers are way out of whack. But that, that idea is the same. You can mm. cut your cost by 30, 40, 100% sometimes, um, depending on how you position these options. Mm. But the whole reason behind this is that you believe the markets are gonna go up. You bought the underlying with your money, 100 shares of GE at six bucks, so you spent $600. And now you're purchasing insurance in the event that GE tanks. But the insurance can be expensive, so then you sell the call to pay off some of that insurance. It becomes smaller now in terms of cost. Mm. But at the same time, you limit your upside. Because mm. now GE, if it goes from $6 to $9 where you sold the call, uh, that's your maximum gain. Mm. So even if it goes up to $12, you're not going to profit from, from that additional $3 of a move. Uh, but, you know, it's a trade-off you have to make. And if you're not 100% sure behind something, then it's sometimes better to be able to go to sleep at night uh, mm. for the retail investor when you're not a big institution with you know, billions of dollars to swing behind you. Um, this is a good way of mitigating risk. Mm. So I um, can go on to another strategy, which is, well, I guess it seems a bit more complicated, but people use a put option to actually buy a, a, a position yes as twisted as that may sound mm -hmm. absolutely so how how does that work okay well the when people are trading stocks or they they want to buy some stock they want to buy some gold and let's say gold today is at 1785 they say well you know i'm not willing to buy gold unless it's 1750. So most of the time they'll go and put something called a limit order where if ever the market comes down to 1750, that order will be filled. And at that point in time, then you're long. Well, why do a limit order when you can sell a put? Because remember, um, when you sell a put, you have the right um, when you sell the put, at that point in time, you have to deliver a short position, and by default, you then take possession of a long position. 
So by selling the put, as twisted as this is, by selling the put, you actually go long at that point if ever the markets touch it. So it's like a limit order, but remember, when you sell an option, you collect money. Mm. So let's say in this situation, we end up collecting um, $15 an ounce. So $1,500, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So at that point in time, you've effectively, if ever the markets do hit $1,750, your put is now in the money, so you will, you'll be given a long position at $1,750, but you collected $15 worth of premium per ounce. Mm -hmm. So your effective cost now for the same ounce of gold is $1,735 instead of $1,750. Yeah. So why, in goodness sakes, would you do a limit order when you can sell a put? And if ever the markets didn't hit there, what happens, Joel? If they don't hit there? Correct. What happens? You get to keep the money. You get to keep the money. Sell a put. If you want to get into the market, you, you were going to spend the money anyways. Um, you're, you want to go long in gold. You want to go long 100 shares of GE, you want to go long anything, or short for that matter, well, long for the put, then sell the put. Mm. You collect a premium up front, which in the event where the market hits the price you wanted it filled, that would reduce your cost base and therefore increase your protection, because in effect, you've just bought $15 margin of safety, or you've also increased your profit potential by that amount depending on how you want to look at it. So it allows you to get into the market, collect some money. And if the markets don't hit, you've just made $1,500, right? Or whatever the amount might be. I'm just using that as an example. But you, you can use options for so many things. People need to get educated on these things, Joe. Because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, it makes your invest... The more tools you have at your disposal, as long as you know how to use them, um, the better the decisions you can make, the better you can mitigate your risk. Hmm. The, you, can, you can make income on a stock that has no dividend. Hmm. You just sell some calls on the stock that you own. Now you're generating yield and you're counting on a capital gain from your stock. Hmm. If, if you feel that the markets are about to tank, I mean, we're in all time highs right now, Joe. And there's really no reason why we should be at all-time highs right now. You know, Europe's a disaster. We're printing our way out of things. Yeah. And, uh, and they're not fixing any of these solutions. So if you feel skittish at these levels, and of course this is just my opinion, then at that point in time you can buy a put and protect your equity positions at this all-time high. So in effect, you've locked in this all-time high price and if ever things were to tank, well, that put option is going to profit by that amount. And net effect, you've just profited from the downfall. Hmm. So very important to know these tools, especially now that times seem to be stabilizing or good. Um, it's a good time to know these things so that when times aren't as nice, then you already know what your strategy is going to be. What are you going to do if the markets tank 20%? Are you ready for that? Hmm. Even if they go down 10%, could you profit from that? Mm. So, you know, take a look at these different things. Number one, covered call, standard strategy. Google it up, you'll find it. If you want some information, give me a call. I'd be more than happy to help you. Second one is the married put, which is you own the underlying. You, you're, you know, you own the gold contract or you own GE and you buy the put with it to protect it from any type of downward uh, fluctuations. Um, if you're concerned of the cost of the insurance, do the caller, sell the call, use that money to pay off some of the insurance, if not all of it. And if you're looking to get into the market, then don't, don't press this button that says limit order, press another button that says sell put at this level and make some money. You know, if, if you have the serious intent of owning that underlying and you have the money, sell the put, make that extra cash. If, if you were, if it didn't hit, you keep it. If it does hit, you've just reduced your cost basis. In our example, it was by $15 an ounce. So it's effectively like you bought it at $17.35, which would be outstanding at these prices.
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that put strategy, you would have to have the money. And I mean, you're going to have the money anyway because you wanted to buy that underlying yes. anyway. That's the kind of... That's the mentality you should that's have. That's the with mentality. It. You're going to do it no matter what. Correct. This is just a cheaper way to do it. Exactly. And it's uh, it's a more effective way for you to be able to enter the market while, you know, playing it a little bit more and making some extra money. Um, but you know, th there's a difference between people who genuinely want to get into the market and are looking to reduce their cost basis and getting at a specific specific price. And people that are selling options for speculative gain, with with no with no money backing them, mm. so they have no intention of buying uh, this underlying in this case, and um, and in this case they're taking a s significant risk, and we mm. call it naked option selling. It's naked because it's not linked to the actual underlying, and that's the difference between the strategy I just gave at the start, covered call. It's a covered strategy because the sold call, the short call, um, is protected by actually owning the underlying. So your risk is, is, is limited. You, mm -hmm. you own the underlying. So the real risk really is that you can only make this much money, right? Mm -hmm. Apart from underlying risk, if ever it tanks, well, it tanks. But you owned it anyways. You might as well make some yield by selling a call, right? Mm -hmm. So any other strategies that uh, you've come across that, oh. that use options, well, there's probably many, but... There, there's a gazillion, but I would have to say, you know, for, for people to get their feet wet, um, it's, it's um, the ones that I described are the ones that, if I can use the word safe without saying safe, because every, every investment has an implied risk, uh, but at least these ones, you know, when you're buying an option, the loss is limited to the amount that you've placed into it. So if you pay $300 for the option, the most you could ever lose is 300 bucks. Um, so in that way, it's nice because it's a defined risk. And if somebody doesn't have, you know, what's Google trading at right now? Oh, gee, no idea. Let's just say $500, right? Uh, 100 shares of Google is 50 grand. Mm -hmm. so if you don't have 50 grand to throw around and, and maybe you've got 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, then options could be a good way for somebody who is looking to profit from, from you know, an expected move up or down uh, to be able to participate without having $50,000. So mm. there's an Im implied leverage uh, that's built into it uh, without the negative connotation because the risk is limited. And with mm. the other ones, well, they're, they're covered strategies. So it's, it's, it's a reasonable way to get started and mostly for people who already own the stock. Make more money off your stock. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. There are these tools that are available to the retail investor um, that with just a little bit of study can, uh, mm -hmm. can give them the opportunity to, you know, um, to profit more than they already are mm -hmm. or to limit the risk more so than they already are or to enter the market and make money while entering the market at a price level that they were already planning on getting into, right? Mm. And the same thing is if you're looking to get out of the market. So let's say you own gold. It's, uh, it's at 1750, now today's at 1785, and you say, well, you know what? If ever gold hits 1800, I would be really happy. And in that situation, one contract would be worth $5,000 gain. So, Typically, what somebody will then do is say, well, let's set a take profit level here at 1800 and same type of thing. When the market hits it, boom, then it closes. Sell a call. Sell a call. If it doesn't hit that amount, you know, then great. You've just collected, let's say, that $15 per ounce times 100 ounce, $1,500. Hmm. If it does hit that amount, great. You were planning on getting out anyways. You've delivered that, you've just made the $5,000 gain, and you made the $1,500 from selling the call. Mm -hmm. So it's just, well, it's a different tool to exit. Mm -hmm. You just have to look at it differently. It's mm -hmm. just a tool, but it's a tool that pays you. Mm -hmm. So it's fantastic. You wanna get into the market, there's a way to get into the market and get paid. 
if you want to get out of the market and you already own the underlying, there's a way to get out of the market and get paid. So it's all about getting paid all, all the time, all right? Getting paid. Make money wherever you can. If it's already there and you already have the intention of getting in or you're already in and you're, you, you have the intention of getting out, make money by doing it. You don't like the, the, the underlying anymore. You, you know, you bought, you bought gold at 1785. You're, you're, you're starting to panic and you say, you know, this, this I, I just need to get out now. Sell it at the money. Do you have any idea how much money you're going to make by selling an option at the money? I mean, on gold at 30 days out, you may make 20 grand, 17,000. And, and in the event where it doesn't hit, you know, the unlikely event where, you know, things things tank, then you just keep all that money. And while well, you still own the gold, but it would, it would in effect soften that blow. But in the event where it does hit it, while well, you get out anyways at the price you wanted, which would be a market order, but instead you've collected this whack of cash. Hmm. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Obviously it's not that simple, you have to think about it a little bit. There's the time value component of things as well and where the option will end up at expiry. But there's ways to, to reduce that risk. There's ways to do it very intelligently so that you have a high probability of success. Mm. But these are all these different ways that you can really use these tools to your advantage to do things that you would do anyways. Mm. But you might as well get paid, right? Yeah. So this can be done on the equity side, this can be done on the commodity side. Yeah, so um, you, you did explain this, but I'll bring it up again, uh, the leverage. So options are a way of um, obtaining leverage, but you're not actually borrowing the money. Correct. You're just amplifying the results. That's right. By looking at the change. So that Google example where it's $500, the option might be fifty dollars so you can and if google were to go up fifty dollars it'll do the same in both cases correct. the five hundred dollar and the fifty dollar case correct but the amount of money you're putting in is a lot less absolutely absolutely for one of them in that example you know if it's fifty dollars and it goes up by fifty bucks well then you know you you've just made a massive return hmm. i mean well it depends let's say it's fifty dollars per share that you would be paying so in total you've paid you know five thousand dollars for for this option well you know if if there's a fifty dollar gain on google times 100 shares you've just made five grand on your five grand that's a hundred percent return whereas that fifty dollars on the five hundred dollar share is a ten percent return then you got to put up fifty grand mm. so it's a different it's a different game but at the same time, when you own the shares of Google, you own the shares of Google. It's not three months from now, those shares aren't worth, okay, if Google goes bankrupt, that's, that's different. But there's no time value to Google shares, mm -hmm. right? Once you own it, you own it. But in the case of the option, you know, if, if, if your bet is not correct when you buy this option at expiry, so let's say it's three months out, that's when it expires, if if the price hasn't hit um, this option price, then you lose all your money. Whereas you wouldn't lose all your money with Google unless it went bankrupt. So it's, it's different ways uh, mm. to really play it. But obviously the more time you have, the more time you have to be correct, but also mm. the more money you're gonna pay in exchange for this luxury. Mm. So it's a careful balance on how to do things and uh and obviously you know it's it's a bit of an art on how to get in uh to these options when to go long when to go short these options and um and and you know then then we get into things like technical analysis and fundamental analysis uh to mm -hmm. determine whether or not you know uh, a significant price movement is likely mm -hmm. you know in either direction so there we go yeah, so if people want more information or they want to contact you, uh, what, uh, do you have a website or? A sure, we have a v website. It's, it's www.vequitas, V-E-Q-U-I-T-A-S dot com. There, there's a form where uh, they, they can fill out their information and using that information, then one of our representatives will then call 
and um, and you know answer any questions that there may be. Uh, Vequitas though is a is a commodity brokerage firm, so we only deal in futures and options, um, and options on futures. So people on the equity side, um, unfortunately, we can't help them with our products, but that doesn't mean that I'm I'm not open to uh, to uh, to you know describing the strategies in greater detail and helping them. Uh, on that path. Once again, these strategies are applicable right across the board. It doesn't matter what industry you're in or what asset class it is. It still works. Um, so I'd be more than happy to help them there. Um, and then email is uh, T like Thomas, L-E-M-A-G-U-E-R at Vequitas.com. So they can contact me there if they'd like. Okay, that's very good. Absolutely. So, uh, well, thanks for coming on. Absolute and, pleasure, uh, Joe. Always. Thank you. So uh, that's our show for today. Uh, you can see the archives, the past episodes on this, uh, this website, thatchannel.com, or my website, www.joetheinvestor.ca. There's a tab called The Cube Talk Show, and you'll find the uh, episodes from most recent uh, scrolling down on there. My contact information is uh, jolieinvestor.today at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at jolieinvestor. You can find me on Facebook under jolieinvestor group or Joe Barbieri. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. And uh, so that's our show for today. The usual time is the third Tuesday of the month at 6 to 7. Any additional shows? Actually, all the episodes are listed in the Upcoming Guests tab, so you can find out which days uh, we'll be broadcasting. So have a good evening. Thanks for watching.